James Boswell by Jackson Tafur. So before we start discussing James Boswell, I will first like to discuss the period of art that this century was in. And this century is mainly called the Neoclassical Era or Neoclassicalism. This period of art lasted from around 1660 to 1798 and consisted of three periods. The Restoration Age, which lasted from around 1660 to 1700, the Augustan Age, which was mainly inspired by Alexander Pope and lasted from around 1700 to 1750, and the Age of Johnson, which was mainly inspired by Samuel Johnson, that lasted from 1750 to 1798. Neoclassicalism was mainly inspired around the art style of the Romans and Greeks, and the Romans and Greeks were mainly involved with around human existence, logic, and order. The Enlightenment also fell around the same time, which was also heavily based around the human nature and reason and also the push for science rather than religion. Then this also relied on accuracy and decorum. Throughout this time period, satire and even comics were very common and they were used to kind of ridicule men and make men look imperfect. The neoclassical age was mainly known for its imperfect portrayal of men. During the Renaissance, they would mainly portray men as heroes and glorify them to be perfect. This, style, this neoclassical style mainly portrayed men as imperfect and whoever's, and their power were limited by only himself and they were never seen as true heroes and were almost always criticized. I would now like to discuss the early life of James Boswell. James Boswell was born on October 29th, 1795 and he was born into a very well-off family. Boswell's father was an advocate as well as the laird of the property that he lived on. And with his father being an advocate, he was, James was very well to be expected to become a judge or even a lawyer. James Boswell's family was also extremely well connected, and Boswell was expected to push his family name even further and even keeping the wealth of life. He was also expected to maintain the title of the Lord of Achenlech when he becomes the ninth laird. James Boswell was also sent to a day school at the age of five and spent his Set the ages 8 to 13, learning at home until he eventually was old enough to go learn at university. Boswell's love for education was not very strong. He hated the day school that he attended when he was younger and didn't really love the idea of being taught from home. So when he was 13, he was given the opportunity to start to study at the University of Edinburgh, which he used to study the arts. Boswell then returned to the University of Edinburgh in 1758 to pursue his father's passion, his father's passion, and that was for him to study law. Boswell then came distracted with his love of theater and the love of art. The Lord, his father, the Lord of Achenlech, thought it'd be extremely important for him to regain his focus and start to continue his path on the study of law. He sent James Boswell to the University of Glasgow, where he attended lectures of Adam Smith, who was a very well-known philosopher at the time. Boswell, getting extracted again, eventually ran away to London, where he fell in love and was immersed with the cultural life of the city. It was here where he spent a few months pretty much having a, fun, a good time and just having fun and meeting people, and this was where and he actually contracted an STD. James's father eventually found him and sent him back to Scotland where he spent the rest of his time studying law at home where he was under very strict supervision. After a few years studying at home, studying law at home, he eventually passed his civil law trial in 1762. He would then continue to study law until around 1763 where eventually he took his grand tour all around Europe. After studying law and passing his civil law trial in 1762, James Boswell and his father agreed for James to study at a civil law in Utrecht for the winter, and then after that completion, he was allowed to take a grand tour all across Europe. He began his travels by first traveling to Germany, and more specifically to Berlin, to attempt to meet Frederick the Great. During this trip as well, Boswell also made a, made a stop in Switzerland and interviewed two very well-known philosophers, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Voltaire. Boswell then sightseed nine months throughout all of Italy. His last stop on his grand tour was definitely the most exciting and definitely the most interesting of any of the stops. 
this was a tour around the island of Corsica, which is along the southern border of France in the Mediterranean Sea. This is where he met a rebel leader by the name of Pascal de Pauli and, bef and eventually befriended him. Boswell would eventually help Corsica win their independence from the tyranny country, tyrannous country, and he would also post a journal about these endeavors that would become extremely popular, and that was the reason why they eventually were able to win their independence. Before I discuss James Boswell's major works, I'd first like to discuss his very interesting and unique writing style for this time period of the neoclassical age. Boswell is most known and being most famous for for being one of the world's best English diarists. Um, James Boswell first started out as writing journals um, anonymously, anonymous, 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 and he was also enamored by writing down all of life and more specifically writing every single detail of life that he possibly could. So this can be kind of why James Boswell is can be influenced by the neoclassical age by being able to write around write stories about people and they're they, they're being pretty accurate stories as well but the biggest reason why james boswell kind of drifts away from the neoclassical era is because he doesn't very well he tends to glorify whoever he's writing about boswell would become extremely creative and oddly specific whenever he retold his events or retold any events of anybody's lives he would write down to like extraordinary detail and pretty much make it the reader feel like they are actually reliving this life through his words the use of his character use of characters throughout a lot of or all of boswell's journals gave the stories even more life and energy and were extremely entertaining to read now I would like to discuss one of James Boswell's first major works, and that book is called An Account of Corsica, The Journal of a Tour to That Island, and the Memoirs of Pascal Paoli. This book was about James Boswell's experiences on the island, as well as everything he saw and the people who he met. This book is also split into two parts, the first part being An Account of Corsica, which is a brief exposition, well, not very brief, but a exposition and a history of the island of Corsica and how it became a tyrannous nation. The next part is actually the a, a journal of the tour and his interactions with the rebel leader Pascal de Paoli. The second part of this book is a lot more critically acclaimed and it was definitely a lot more important when it comes to the history of this island. Him being able James Boswell being able to explain and detail his interactions with Pascal and as well as his interactions throughout the island was a very large stepping stone into giving the independence to um, Corsica. Because of Boswell's very strong and specific writing, this book gave an extremely valuable insight to the countries of Europe of what was actually happening inside of the country of Corsica. Boswell's description and interactions with um, Paoli was also very interesting because it was actually seen as propaganda at the time because he was able to glorify and push the tyrannous of Corsica being such villains that people started to feel bad for this country and wanted people to, or countries to take action. This eventually forced France to make a move and eventually announced that they were planning on annexing the island and eventually helping them regain or gain their independence from Corsica. These series of journals and eventually book was actually Boswell's first book that was ever published. The next book I would like to discuss is one of James Boswell's most greatest known pieces of work. This book is called The Life of Samuel Johnson. Life of Samuel Johnson is heavily regarded as one of the greatest English biographies ever written. This book was originally published in 1791, and this was seven years after Johnson's death, and sadly four years before James Boswell's inevitable death as well. One of Boswell's biggest idols in life was Samuel Johnson, and 
Boswell was given the opportunity to eventually meet Johnson back in 1763, and from that original interaction, they became very close friends. They, were, they also both maintained a very close relationship, and because of this very close relationship, Boswell was able to keep enough tabs on James or Samuel Johnson's life to be able to write his biography about. It. The book overall is an extremely detailed biography about Johnson and his life. For instance, in the in the biography, Boswell not only has interactions between himself and Johnson, he also has interactions with Johnson and other people with actual quotes. One of the passages read about eight or ten days before his death, when Dr. Brocklesbury paid him his morning visit, he seemed very low and desponding, and said, I have been an, as a dying man all night. He then emph emphatically broke out in the words of Shakespeare, Canst thou not minister to a mind deceased, plucked from the memory of a sor rooted sorrow? This passage is just a great example of how James Boswell was to was able to encapture every single detail from his was from Samuel Johnson's life, and this is why this biography is such heavily regarded. The book is also mainly split into two different parts. Not mainly being two parts, but the first part of Samuel Johnson's early life is actually told in the perspective of his friends, his close ones, or anyone that he really loved. The second part and the majority of the actual biography is in the perspective of James Boswell. Whenever Samuel Johnson and James Boswell actually met up and had conversations, Boswell would actually keep records of the conversations that he had with Johnson and he used those conversations in his biography. One of the biggest flaws that critics have of this book is that of James Boswell having extreme bias towards Samuel Johnson. James Boswell extremely admired Johnson, and because of this, there wasn't very much like critical bias against Samuel Johnson. Everything that James Boswell wrote about him very much glorified him as a person and made him seem like a very great person and not very well disliked or critiqued. I will finally like to discuss James Boswell's late life. Boswell's, Boswell sadly spent most of his life as a lawyer because that's what his father really wanted. He was eventually admitted to the Faculty of Advocates in 1766, and Boswell ended up marrying his first cousin, Margaret Montgomery, in 1769. Even more sadly is that James Boswell's practice ended up becoming more and more weak, and he wasn't becoming as well practiced. Boswell began to start drinking and became extremely depressed and distanced away from his wife. As his lawyer years were weakening, Boswell actually began to write and publish more and more journals and more articles. He eventually became the ninth Lord of Achenlech and succeeded his, succeeded his father and, and published most of the first part of the life of Samuel in 1785. Boswell then published the second part of The Life of Johnson in 1791, and then began working on the third part of The Life of Johnson. He sadly passed away before he could finish the third part, and he passed away in 1795. These are just a timeline of some of James Boswell's major works, his first one being The Club at Newmarket in 1762, and then you can see The Account of Corsica, which was published in 1768. He then had a series of journals that he wrote, The Rampanger and The Hypochondriac from 1770 to 82, and then 1777 to 83. And then you can see his last, very last book that he published was No Abolition of Slavery. And these are my sources. Thank you.